Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and today we're going to be watching Captain America Winter Soldier to see how scientifically accurate the technology and engineering scenes in the movie really are. Fracture detected. Recommend anesthetic injection. <laughs> DC Metro Police Dispatch shows no units in this area. Get me out of here. Propulsion systems offline. Then reboot, damn it! Everything that was just displayed on his um, car, like the windshield of it, it's possible to do that, in fact, now. Um, I know that the brand new Camaro, I think, actually has the ability to do something very, very similar to this. This car also showed that he had a fracture in his arm. I don't know how it was able to do that. I mean, but my first thought is like, if a certain part of his body hit the steering wheel, then the steering wheel could detect something. I mean, this is a bit far-fetched. I don't actually know how they were able to do that. But the car was able to show which part of it exactly wasn't functioning properly. And I don't think you actually need this. Um, I believe the car has the ability to do all of it, right? Because it can, uh, the computer in your car can register what's going wrong with the car because it has an idea of what the correct values of everything should be. So if anything is out of place, normally in your car on your dashboard, you'll see like a check engine light go on or like replace the oil or like whatever's going on, it'll have that sort of indication instead of directly telling you like, um, it's like engine is uh, wrong, like pistons need to replace. It doesn't tell you something that specific. And the reason for that is because most people don't know how their car works. They just want it to work, but they don't actually care how it functions. So when something does go wrong, like a check engine light is more than enough for someone to go take it to a mechanic to get it fixed. No, <laughs> that's not gonna, um, no, I, I really can't think of a way that an object like that could actually get him out of that situation. Because, I mean, yeah, you can, like, have enough heat to just burn, like, a hole in the top of your car. That's no problem. But the difficulty would be to actually get that through the concrete of the sidewalk. And because if you look at the scene, like, that hole he created actually goes pretty deep into the ground. And I don't know if just pure heat and fire alone in that short amount of time can burn through the concrete that quickly. This never made sense to me in any of the Marvel movies that we've seen to date. If Captain America's shield is made of vibranium, how does it bounce off of anything? Because the whole thing about vibranium is that it absorbs all vibrations and then dissipates them, right? So whenever you throw that shield at something, it'll just absorb all the vibration that whatever object you threw it at has sent back to it. So there's no way that the shield can ricochet off of any surface. And I could be wrong, and probably am, when it comes to this sort of thing, but there's, there's no real explanation I can see of why the shield can bounce off of anything. Like, even if it's the way that someone throws it, it doesn't matter. Because of the, the nature of the metal vibranium, I mean, in this movie, it says that it'll absorb all vibrations. So for something to actually bounce off of a wall, for example, you have to first make contact with it, and then the wall will send an equal amount of force back at the object. And that's why anything bounces at all. But when a shield hits anything, that impact will all be absorbed. So there's no way it could ever bounce off of anything. The drive has a level six homing program, so as soon as we boot up shield, we'll know exactly where we are. How much time will we have? Uh, about nine minutes from now. If you're on your laptop and you go to like a Starbucks or someplace that's offering free Wi-Fi, the moment you connect to the Wi-Fi, like you don't actually need to go on a website just the moment Wi-Fi makes a connection, 
your location is known and all the information that they need is already prepared. So this is actually a little bit of a misnomer here. Like it won't take them nine minutes to track you. It'll take them nine minutes to drive to you. But like to actually figure out when someone plugs in a flash drive to a computer, that search can be done very, very quickly, especially considering the, the current information that's on that flash drive is so sensitive. Like they don't need to scan every computer in all the parts of the world. Like the search is very, very narrow as it already is. So finding them would be very, very quick. Arnim Zola was a German scientist who worked for the Red Skull. He's been dead for years. First correction, I am Swiss. Second, look around you. I have never been more alive. In 1972, I received a terminal diagnosis. Science could not save my body. My mind, however, that was worth saving. On 200,000 feet of data banks, you are standing in my brain. I gotta give some credit to the production designers or the producers of this movie because uh, this giant room full of servers is actually how computers at that time really used to be. And now the computing power that you have in your phone <laughs> is actually probably more than what you see in like all of those like 200 square foot or whatever he was saying of those hard drives. As far as putting your brain into a computer and like your conscious mind that technology has not yet been developed but we are very very close to it it won't take very long before this becomes a reality this thing that you pretty much carry around with you at all times it's a digital extension of you like we might not be 100 percent integrated into a machine yet but we are already cyborgs for the most part. Everyone's smartphone is different and everyone's smartphone shows a little bit of who they are in digital form. Not just the software, the hardware too. Like the cases you put on your phone could say something about your interest or about just the kind of person you are, let alone the software, like the apps you have on your phone and the way that you use them, how much time you put on each of those things. Like this is all who you are, but digital. Your phone has your, your music choices, the gym you work out at, the food you eat, the school you go to, the classes you take, which is really crazy when you think about it. Like, even like your phone is with you everywhere you go. Like, the only real difference between like the, the Hollywood version of a cyborg from like Teen Titans and what we are right now is that we're not physically plugged into this machine, right? But literally, your phone is everywhere you go. And every time it gets low on battery, like you literally start to feel this anxiety. Like you can't have your phone go low on battery because it feels like you're going low on battery. Like your phone is as much a part of you as it can possibly be. I'm ready for that. Man, I, I have so many problems with Falcon as a character, but just the actual technology that makes him Falcon. I don't think that there's any sort of scientific accuracy within that in the slightest. So the very first question is, how does it fly? You know, like while he was like shooting up in the air, there was no exhaust coming out of him. It looked like it was just pure heat that was being released out of the um, exhaust of like, I mean, whatever, like see, that's the thing. Like there's so many things wrong with this suit. I mean, it's essentially just like a harness with like the super powered jetpack on your back. Like I don't even know what the wings are really there for. Beyond that, it, he's actually carrying somebody else with him. So this Falcon um, like suit, wings or whatever you want to call it, like it actually has the ability to carry more than one person. And I don't know how this is even possible. Also, you've seen Falcon like he's flying up and down and all around like at 3000 feet with those helicarriers and um, it, like, h how is there any possible way that he's doing that without an oxygen mask? Like, I've never seen Falcon pass out, you know? And, like, there's he certainly would if he's dropping from such a high elevation, such a low one, and then back up in this ridiculously short amount of time. So let's algorithm is a program. We're choosing insights targets. What targets? You... A TV anchor in Cairo, the other Secretary of Defense, a high school valedictorian in Iowa City, Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, anyone who's a threat to Hydra. Now, or in the future. 
future. How could it know? <laughs> How could it not? The 21st century is a digital book. Zola taught Hydra how to read it. Your bank records, medical histories, voting patterns, emails, phone calls, your damn SAT scores. Zola's algorithm evaluates people's past to predict their future. Well, so, um, yes, obviously this is very, very real in today's world, but we don't call it Zola's algorithm. We call it uh, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon. People are willing to provide all the information in the world about themselves. Like when Facebook is asking you, like, what's your name, relationship status, birthday, where you live, like, there's just so much stuff that you're giving them, right? And then when it comes to Amazon, it's like it's tracking down all the things that you purchase, so it's suggesting new things that you might like based off your previous items that you bought. These very large tech companies are able to take all the information that you provided them. Like, I mean, I'm included. Like, when you're on Instagram, right, and you're posting, like, I ate, I don't know, this at this restaurant, you know? It's like, like Instagram will look at all these things and it'll process, okay, so if you're eating, like, at a Chinese restaurant, like, these many days a week, this consistently, they're gonna sell your information to advertisers, like Google, and then Google is going to provide you with targeted ads for stuff that you might like. And now those companies have the information of how you will probably behave in your future. It's not 100% accurate, obviously, because it's technology. If it's man-made, then it will never be 100% accurate. But if it has, let's just say, like 50 years worth of your information for the food you ate, the pe people you voted for, the places you've lived, uh, they have a pretty good idea of where you will go in the next years of your life. The Winter Soldier. So first I'm going to talk about this mechanical arm of his that gives him insane amount of strength. Yeah, you can do that today. If you wanted to really make this something happen, yeah, you can have a prosthetic limb that's way beyond the strength of anyone else on this planet. I mean, this will fit for a majority of people too. Like, it's not like a one person can make this happen, someone else can't. When you do lose like a limb, for example, and you put a prosthetic limb onto that area, like, like an arm as um, Winter Soldier lost, those nerve endings, because you were born and raised and you lived with having two arms, if you lost one of them, your body still thinks that that arm is there. Like you can still use your mind to move that arm and to like move your hands on that arm that doesn't exist. Like it's not no longer attached to your body, but like I said, your, the nerve endings are still there to send signals to that area, but nothing is coming back. So with the new prosthetic limb technology, they're able to just use those nerve endings and amplify that signal so that you can use your brain to move a prosthetic limb the way that it would be if you had just your biological arm attached to you. Now we know like watching this scene here we can see that his arm reacts to electricity when Black Widow throws that little thing at him and it puts a um, spark or whatever through his arm. It doesn't function as well and what that means is that there's an electromagnet inside of that mechanical arm that's allowing him to get even more strength than he normally would. This is the same technology that Iron Man uses to make his suit super powerful. You can use that electric power to actually move things that are way heavier than you. Also in this scene you can see that his arm doesn't function properly when she does do that, which is because electrical components only operate at their optimal level when they're within a certain voltage range. When you move outside that voltage range, like for example when this um, static electricity went all through his arm, the components inside of it will no longer function the way they're supposed to. And that's why his arm kind of shuts down because the electromagnet has gone outside of its range of optimal use and it's going to fail. So we have that arm completely covered. It's possible to have it, to move it, and to have the strength that he does. The only thing about this arm I will add is that you won't feel anything. Like just because you have nerve endings actually going to the arm, it is a piece of metal, right? Like that metal does not have a sense of touch. I mean, if you were to... Um, like grab something with your prosthetic limb, your body would obviously know that you're holding something with some mass because it's gonna be like tugging on your shoulder. So you, you'll feel the tension, but you won't actually feel, like if you put that arm in like water, 
you're not going to feel like your hand being wet. Which kind of fits in with the whole Winter Soldier persona because he's supposed to be just like an assassin who doesn't feel any sort of emotion. That arm will help him get the job done. As far as his memory goes, your ability to remember finer details and just events in general will deteriorate over time. That's why the older you get, the less powerful your access to your memory actually becomes. And there's like a bell curve on this, right? It's not like when you're one years old, you remember everything at all times. You don't have much to remember, right? But after a certain age, your memory will begin to slow down and deteriorate as it naturally does. This movie is actually was really cool too because you see someone like the Winter Soldier who literally has none of his memories kept inside of his head after all of this time. And then you have Dr. Zola who actually kept all of his memories inside of a computer after an equal amount of time. But to uh, lose your memory is a lot easier than to retain it. And yeah, you can use, um, as they show in the movie, like some sort of shock treatment or even like just spoken therapy can make you forget memories or even more bizarre it can make you remember things that you didn't even do which i know how crazy that does sound but the brain is a very very sensitive organ this is project insight three next generation helicarriers synced to a network of targeting satellites launch from the lemurian star once we get them in the air, they never need to come down. Continuous suborbital flight, courtesy of our new repulsor engines. Stark? Uh, he had a few suggestions once he got an up-close look at our old turbines. For, for these helicarriers to just get up in the air, you will require a ridiculous amount of thrust. I mean, I don't even know if we can produce that much. We probably can if you needed to do this, but goodness like there's no need to have these in the air if one of these helicarriers like falls <laughs> just while it's up there i mean that's gonna be like a comet hitting the earth so just from an engineering standpoint why would you ever build these to begin with if, if for any reason one of them falls i i can't imagine that the insurance would cover that <laughs> when it comes to just the thrust and getting them in the air the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the mass of that <laughs> is insane. The force of gravity will decrease the higher you go from the center of the Earth, but yeah, at 3,000 feet, you are definitely feeling the same amount of force that you were feeling when you were on the surface. So not only would you require an extremely large amount of thrust just to get from the ground into the air, you're also going to need to continuously release that fuel to keep those helicarriers in the air so really like I, I don't even know how much fuel it would take to burn just to keep these things up right let alone get them into the air initially like if you want something to orbit around the earth for whatever reason just put a satellite up there right i mean we, we do that all the time but to have something like this just in the <laughs> in the sky it's like there doesn't seem to be a genuine purpose for something like this I'll let you guys decide how accurate this movie is from its engineering perspective based off my analysis. If I missed anything or you want to just tell me how amazing and awesome I am, just go ahead and throw that in the comments. It'll make my day. If there's a movie or a TV show or whatever you want me to do a commentary over for something like this, go ahead and put that in the comments as well and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh. Stay golden.